and balloons would have floated away. Exactly. So it is exciting, it is happening, and, and on the panel it's already been stated that, you know, within our lifetime, let me tell you folks, I think within the next three or four years, you're going to see some amazing things coming out. And the th one thing that's amazing to me is because I do come from the news media, is that the news media is now slowly, grudgingly, beginning to treat these stories with some sincerity and seriousness. Uh, I watched the ABC uh, report from the guy in the street about the sighting in New York, and he wasn't laughing and sneering at all these people. He was going, there's something up there, and he says, uh, what is it? And he said, I just really don't know. And, okay, I'm moving that as far as factual reporting goes. Uh, it's really amazing. Other people think they are Arcturian, very specific groups of extraterrestrials who come and send down templates or patterns or energy and work with the Earth divas who are here anyway and make the patterns. Some people think there are other dimensional beings who come and make the patterns. Other people say that there are templates in the Earth. I think that there is going to be some kind of disclosure. I actually think that we're going to see President Obama on TV, and he's going to be sitting there in the White House, you know, with the pane windows behind him, and Michelle and the kids and the pictures right behind him. And he's going to say, "Yeah, you've been lied to for, for 50 years." An uh, alien will be poking about him in the shoulders. <laughs> And he's going to tell us that one man has been behind that cover-up, and that man is George W. Bush. <laughs> now, the UFO was over a small town in China, and the town is gone? Yeah. Wow. Richard, do you want anything about that? <coughs> Give, giving you a mic is dangerous. <laughs> 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 Why you have to be very careful. Get the bell ready. <laughs> Sent for a gong, actually. Okay. Um, the actual story is that the Chinese military authorities have closed off the town. The town was evacuated. It's near some kind of nuclear facility in China. And when you go to Google, the term disappeared and evacuated are switched. Uh, so the, the misimpression on the internet is because of the Google mistranslation. Was it UFO related? Not really. No. But there's so much UFO activity in China, which is very suspicious. My personal opinion is it's, it's pressure of some kind because the Chinese have put a spacecraft in orbit around the moon. And as I said, what, two nights ago, they're now talking officially of either bringing it back to Earth, which is very strange. That has never happened. <laughs> in the last 60 years of the space programs of any nation before that we put an orbital spacecraft around the moon and then brought it back. Why would you bring it back unless there's something in it to bring back? Mm -hmm. Or number two, they're talking about a secret landing because they launched on a much heavier, more uh, fuel ca capability rocket. So my suspicion seems to be borne out that we might have a secret landing. If UFO activity is political pressure to get them to do what they claim to somebody they want to do, that to me would explain why we're getting a lot of activity in China. So everybody's kind of on the edge. So this disappearing village is part of the internet mass hysteria, if you will. It did not disappear. If we were truly at war for humanitarian reasons, we would be in other areas of this planet right now stopping the atrocities that are going on. But that's not happening because there's nothing for us to gain. And when I say us, I mean these people. And so they won't do that. What they will do, however, is go into regions and go into places that they think they can gain. When we went into Afghanistan, we had a mission. The whole country was behind this mission. And that was to get and Osama bin Laden and to punish the Taliban for not handing him over. Well, several times they offered him, but we didn't want him at that point. When we decided to go in and get him, and he took off, if he's ever around anyway, we're still there all these years. We just had 17 more soldiers die just a few days ago. But poppy fields are back on production. More so than before. Yeah. Now, there's no mistake about this. I was in the military for nine years. I consider myself to be a patriot, and I love this country, no doubt. But there are just too many things that are going on on this planet that just don't make any sense anymore. 
And so I ask you to always come up with that simple question and phrase whenever anything happens, anything, whether it's a city council meeting, who benefits? You look at that first, and then you're going to get your answers to a lot of these questions. Of course there's wars out there. Of course there are problems out there. So to, the idea to think that everything is hunky-dory out there, that's If we were truly at war for humanitarian reasons, we would be in other areas of this planet right now, stopping the atrocities that are going on. But that's not happening, because there's nothing for us to gain. When I say us, I mean these people. And so they won't do that. What they will do, however, is go into regions and go into places that they think. The state of Kansas, Dorothy, it was blue, right? Virgil. And what happened was the Soviets, so the Russians had launched a new ballistic missile from a submarine under the White Sea. It streaked up at 12,000 miles an hour, and we can prove this mathematically, it was stopped in midair and slow down to the speed of a Piper Cub, a couple hundred miles an hour, 100 miles an hour, for the rest of the flight. Huge spirals of stuff, a blue corkscrew beam coming up from somewhere in Norway, total <coughs> phenomenology of torsion field physics. Our interpretation in the papers, three of them on the website, free for you, is this was a message to Obama, something to do with his Nobel Peace Prize, what he was going to be doing in the next three or four years up through 2012. All our speculations backed up by these calculations are on the website. And I will be touching on that this afternoon at 4 o'clock. <laughs> but the thing is that uh, you're right that, you know, at least in my opinion, they have come to the conclusion that it's not about being territorial. It's not about, you know, fighting with each other. You know, even though there, I think, are wars between other civilizations out there, just like there are friendships and, and alliances between other planets out there, but that, um, you know, they at least have figured out not to kill each other. And, you know, and I think that's the only way um, we'll ever advance, because, see, the thing is that the moment that extraterrestrials were to show themselves publicly, then race, how much money you make, social class, becomes irrelevant. Because what you have to say then is, if they ask you, where are you from? Yeah, you can still say you're from California, you're from wherever. But in the end, it's one answer. We have been under the control of a small handful of people going all the way back through our history who want to control us, who want absolute power. And uh, this is something that I'll be talking about in my talk tomorrow. And so we need to, it's, it's not us, it's not the human race. Human race are, are good people. We have to decide, we have to figure out who it is that's been trying to control us through bloodlines, whether it's the Caesar, the Pharaoh, the King, the Fuhrer, whatever. And we need to start identifying those people and stripping them of their power. <laughs>